Hey YouTube, this is a review of the uh, G.I. Joe Sergeant Savage Battle Bunker which in my opinion is a quite underrated little playset. Now um, if you're familiar with the uh, Outpost Defender this is kind of like that but a bit of a cheaper looking version. It is inferior to the Outpost Defender but it's, it's still you know, pretty fun little toy in its own right. Now it comes with this Sergeant Savage figure uh, they're taller than your regular G.I. Joes. As you can see there, it's quite a bit bigger. They weren't very popular at the time, or now even, because they didn't fit in with regular sized G.I. Joes. They kind of had a cheaper look to them with the sculpt, as you can probably see there, and they didn't have the O-ring articulation. They've got this kind of flimsy, quite, quite strange articulation in the groin where the, the legs, they do kind of stick up like that. They don't go out to the sides very much. To get them out front, uh, they, they kind of twist. It's not very good articulation around the groin, but the rest of the articulation is uh, regular G.I. Joe articulation in the arms. The waist moves from side to side. The head goes up and down slightly and side to side. Now, what I've always found strange about this guy is he has a plaster sculpted and painted on his head where he's had a boo-boo and put a, <laughs> put a band-aid on it and it, it just seems the, the oddest bit of detailing in a G.I. Joe figure but I, I do kind of like this figure because I've always liked G.I. Joes in the more realistic kind of gear and this guy's got his camo trousers on and, you know sort of green vest and that ammo belt he's quite cool looking if only he was more to scale and, and just looked a bit better in general quality wise I'd, I'd love it if they did a an updated version of him for the 20th anniversary line but anyway let's move on to the battle bunker itself now as you can see it's got sandbags molded onto the front here which aren't particularly detailed and the main bulk of this is what lets it down this this whole section here looks a little bit cheap but it's got barbed wire here which is removable which is really nicely sculpted and, and quite a nice bit of detailing. I love the camo netting on the top here on these wooden pillars. And the one aspect of this that is superior to the Outpost Defender is this gun. Now the, the one thing that always let me down about the Outpost Defender is the gun. Now that's the Outpost Defender's gun. And to me, it, it just doesn't look realistic enough. Everything else about the Outpost Defender, I love that sort of more realistic aesthetic. I've, I've never liked the more elaborate G.I. Joe guns and costumes and battle stations, but that gun lets it down. But this is a great looking gun. Now it wasn't actually this colour when I got it. I've painted it a, a gun metal grey, which, if I do say so myself, really makes the gun look great. An ammo belt uh, which is removable and it goes through this section in the middle and this is also removable you can unplug this from here so if you wanted you could put that in the outpost defender or wherever you wanted you know behind some sandbags there whatever you want to do with it and uh, this netting is removable too so if nothing else this was this would be a great set for for customizers who want to even if you don't like the main bulk of the the bunker there are some very interesting features to it. Now, this has got great play value, I think, too, because you take your Sergeant Savage figure and you plug him in to this peg on the bottom here. Get his hands holding the gun. And with this button at the bottom here, you move it from side to side and you've got Sergeant Savage firing his gun. Now the clicking noise is supposed to also be the sound of the machine gun, that's a bit naff really, but I still think it's a really cool play feature. And when the button gets all the way across to there, imagine if you will, a missile in there, it fires that out. And it's quite a strong projectile, it you know, maybe flies about a foot, so it's not one of these weak ones that kind of pathetically whoops out. But I, I, the missile's in the garage, it's under a ton of other toys, I couldn't be bothered to get it. I, I've, I, don't, I don't think it looks good having missiles sticking out at the end of things like that, because realistically they wouldn't, the, pro, the projectile would be inside, so I don't like that for display, but you just have to imagine there's a missile that goes in there and you, you get the missile with it. So it might not be the best sculpted toy, but it's got great play value and some great smaller features that are all removable for customization on other G.I. Joe things. 
Now it's also to scale with the roadblock from the new Retaliation movie because he is taller than regular Joes and he actually grabs hold of that gun really nicely and looks pretty good in there. Also, regular G.I. Joes are a bit small for it, but I don't think they look particularly bad. I should put Duke on there. And yeah, actually, he doesn't look out of scale at all with it, I don't think. So I would definitely recommend it. It's, it's not a replacement for the Outpost Defender. It is inferior to the Outpost Defender. But um, I, I think there's still a place for it in displays. I'll just do a comparison here with the Outpost Defender. Let's see the two together. I think they complement each other quite well, actually. Anyway, I know Sergeant Savage isn't the most popular of the G.I. Joe franchise, but maybe this will have shed some light for some people on what I think is an underrated toy. Well, thanks for watching YouTube, and until next time.